Whether they're tornadoes or hurricanes, the roots remain loyal. They stay where they were planted. The concept of having a friend is something that was created within our unique nature. As human beings, God created us as individuals, but not to remain as an individual. Rather, God created us as He created Adam. After the six days of creation, God created man, and then God created Eve. And throughout the creation, God said that it was good. God created the first day and said it was good. And the second day and then the third day and the fourth day, he referred to Kitov, it is good. The first time God said Lotov, it's not good, was when he was talking to Adam and said, Adam, it's not good for man to be alone but rather a man needs a partner. And that is when God created Eve. Our sages teach us how Adam and Eve were actually created by God as Siamese twins. And then God separated them. And that became the very first union of two human beings. So God created mankind not to be alone. We should always have a partnership, whether it's with a wife or with other human beings being friends. The world was created in a format that we need to be friendly to each other and to have a circle of friends that is yours. The word friend in Hebrew is referred to as chaver. Chaver actually means to connect, to have a bond. And that's what friends are truly all about, that you have a special connection. And it's very interestingly that in human nature, if you were to analyze a certain concept that at times we could travel and we meet people and sometimes you meet someone and you connect with them right away. And you become friendly to each other and, and, you, and you begin talking and schmoozing. And it's almost like you have known each other for a long time. It, it, it's, it, although you just met him for the first time, but there is such camaraderie, there's such chemistry that, that you feel like you have known each other. And then you can meet people and you talk to them and there's no connection. There's no chemistry. There's no bond. Why is that? They're both human beings, they're both created by God, and we are all sharing this world together, yet with some people, there's a, there's a chemistry, there's a connection. As a, you can meet someone on a trip, and then you remain friends for life. Why is that? In the books of Kabbalah, in mysticism, it explains that when God creates human beings, they are like structures of a tree and branches. That there's a group of souls that are from the same root system. And when you meet someone who shares a soul from the same root system, there's a certain kinship, there's a certain intrinsic connection that's there. And that is the chemistry that connects you. As a matter of fact, is there even a fair chance that you have connected once in an earlier reincarnation? As we totally believe in reincarnation, that the souls do come to this world and get reincarnated in another body, in another time of life. So sometimes when you meet someone and you feel that intrinsic, unique chemistry connection, there, there's a chance that you guys have been friendly in a previous life, in a previous reincarnation. And this is why it is part of life, is to make friends. It's important to make friends. To make a friend, it requires investment. It needs to be reciprocal. And when a friendship is developed, and you develop a friendship with a person, it is for a purpose and a reason, so that you can actually be there for each other. And that is the definition of a friendship is to be sincere, 
to be loyal and to be real. And a real friendship means that you can truly rely on each other, that you can trust each other, that you feel that the friendship is reciprocal. Well, look through your life and ask yourself the question, how many friends do you still have from preschool, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and middle school, high school, college? We, we have developed very close friendships during those periods of times. But how many friends are still a friend? A friend that you can rely on, a friend that you can trust, a friend that will always be there for you. And I look back in my life, in my 62 years, my six decades of living and going through these various journeys of life, you could, you could break it up by decades. And you ask yourself your question, how many friends do you still have? And the answer is, how many friends have you invested in that is reciprocal, that you still have that friendship? Till this very day, I have a group of friends who we call each other every single Friday. It's been maybe 30 years, 40 years, that a Friday wouldn't go through, that we wouldn't call each other to wish each other a good weekend. And those are the friends that you can call at any time, day and night, and they will respond to you. But that type of a friendship requires investment, of genuine investment of time, and commitment and sincerity and most of all connection making that connection there's a beautiful parable that helps us appreciate the friends that we go through in life it's almost like a, a tree a tree when you look at it it has many leaves and branches so there are some friends in our life that are compared to the leaves that are on the tree. A leaf stays on the tree and hangs on to the branch. Sometimes when the wind comes, a gust of strong wind comes, then the leaf kind of falls off from the branch and just flies away. So we have some friends that are like that. They're superficially your friend but when a little wind comes blowing their way, when you're going through a little difficult time, then all of a sudden kind of the leaf just disappears. They have left you. They don't know you anymore. They all of a sudden disappeared. And then you have friends who are like a branch of a tree. Well, a branch of a tree is very well connected to the tree. And it seems to be pretty firm. But when the winds get a little stronger and they are a little more powerful, some branches seem to break off. They can't take the pressure. They can't take the stress of what you're going through and they just crack and, and disappear at you. The true friend is a friend that is compared to the roots of the tree. Just think about it. Every tree has roots. The roots are buried deep down in the ground. Those roots, you can rely on them. The roots that run deep into the ground don't really care about what happens above ground. No matter how strong the winds are, no matter how powerful the rain is, no matter how powerful the thunders and lightnings are, whether they're tornadoes or hurricanes, the roots remain loyal. They stay where they were planted. They will never abandon you. They will not crack. They will not fly away. The roots will always be there. And that is the true friend. The true friend is a friend who could withstand no matter what you have gone through or been through. I can tell you personally, from my own personal life journey, that I have gone through some very difficult times. And it was fascinating to see which friends of mine remained the roots. Which friends of mine didn't care 
what the outside weather was like. They didn't care about the torrential rains and the powerful winds and storms that went through my life. But they remained loyal. They were my roots. And those are the friends that I knew I could rely on. Through the thickest of times, through the most difficult times, they reached out and they let me know, hey, I'm here for you. I'm your root. And I'll always be there for you. And I thought about that and realizing how beautiful it is to be a friend that's real, that's genuine. A friend that doesn't care of the extremities of what's happening out there because they know that it would pass. They know who the real tree is. They know who the real you are. And if you go through a difficult period, it's just because it's a passing storm. That that is part of life's nature. No one is perfect. People make mistakes. People go through difficult times. People go through illnesses. People go through crises, financial crises, and other types of crises. We don't abandon them. But we remain a root that's deeply rooted in the ground that will be there to help the tree withstand whatever you're going through. And that is actually what our sages teach us in the book of Ethics of Our Fathers, that a person should always acquire for yourself a friend and be a true friend, be a real friend, be a committed friend, because it is truly a reflection of yourself. The more you invest in a friendship, the more honest you are in a friendship, the more loyal and committed you are, it will be reciprocal. And this is how we make it through life. Our family is very dear to us. We are very close to our family. And, and, and we cherish that connection as family. But God also gave us a responsibility to not only think about our own family, our own bubble, but rather to share our love and our concern with others and to develop friendship with others as well. A healthy friendship is a friendship that they know that you have family, they respect your family, and they appreciate whatever you share with them as friends. Together as friends, we can truly make this world a better world. Friends are there for the long haul. Cherish your friendship, work with your friendship, invest in friendship. Think about that today. Think about a friend that you have lost contact with. Think of a friend that you have abandoned because you couldn't handle the stress. Think of the friend that in your mind you call them high maintenance. Think about them and realize how being a friend is as valuable as being alive because you never know how your friendship can lighten up your friend's life and can even save their life and be a beacon of light when they are going through difficult times. Develop friendship, sustain friendships, be a friend, the friend will be yours. Let's all be friends together and that will make this world certainly a more friendly, a meaningful place. Amen. May God bless our brothers and sisters who are fighting for Israel's survival. May God Almighty bring home all the hostages safe and well. God bless you. God loves you.